We're going to be looking at the Chapter 9 workbook exercises from the workbook for a modern grammar for Biblical Hebrew. So this is the bibliographical information for the workbook and then we'll be also referring to the textbook which is a modern grammar for Biblical Hebrew and this is its bibliographical information as well. Let's begin Let's begin with the translation practice. This is on page 38 of A Modern Grammar for Biblical Hebrew Workbook, the Chapter 9 workbook exercises. The first one here has a yiktol verb in it. And in Chapter 9, we learn how the katal, or the perfect verb, is put together. We have not yet had the yiktol in terms of how to construct it. So in order to parse this, we just have to go to our tables. In this case, the table on page 44 of the textbook. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these ones that have yiktol verbs because chapter 9 is where we're introduced to the katal, and I want to go through parsing those. Let's just go through this one real quickly. We have Moshe Ya'amod al Haaretz Bamitzrayim. Moshe Ya'amod al Haaretz Bamitzrayim. And so we have Moses, that's Moshe. And then the second word here is a yiktol verb. Call it a yiktol. And that means it's an imperfect. And we can tell that essentially from the prefix. We will learn more about those in chapter 10. But there is a prefix on here, this, this yod. So our root here is three letters, ayin, maim, and dalit. And then we have this prefix, this yod in front of it. We'll learn more about those in chapter 10, but for right now we just have to look this up because we don't know how to construct them or how to parse them. And the chart on page 44 tells us that this means he will stand. We also learn that because it means he stands, it is a 3MS, third masculine singular, and that matches Moses. Moses is masculine singular. So they match, and so we can put the subject together with the verb. And so we'll go ahead and start filling this out. We get Moses will stand. That's the base, the gloss translation of Ya'amod. Then we have a preposition here, al, which means on, upon, concerning, to. It means quite a few things. And then ha'aretz. This is our word for land, eretz. When we put a definite article on it, the aleph lengthens the vowel under the definite article. And then this is one of the rare cases where the vowel under the first letter actually changes. So we have, instead of ha'aretz, we have ha'aretz. This happens for a handful of words. This one is so common that it's pretty easy to spot. So Moses will stand on the land. It can also mean the earth, but I'm thinking it's probably the land here because of the next word, which is B Mitzrayim. So Mitzrayim is Egypt. The B is the preposition in by with. I'm going to say in here in Egypt. Moses will stand on the land in Egypt. So that's number one. Let's look at number three. We have Asita. Notice my accent here is above the second to last syllable. Asita et hamizbeach begezer. Asita et hamizbeach begezer. Okay, now to figure this one out, 
we're going to have to go look at the chart on page 56 of the textbook. So we'll go over there. So this is page 56 of the textbook. Our rows cover person, so three, two, and one, gender, masculine and feminine, and then common, and then number, singular or plural. So we have third masculine singular, third feminine singular, so he or she, second masculine singular would be you masculine, second feminine singular would be you feminine, first common singular is I, and that covers both male and female, masculine and feminine, that's common. Third common plural is they, and that is the same for either they feminine or they masculine. Second masculine plural would be you masculine. Second feminine plural would be you feminine. And then first common plural would be we, and that's the same for masculine or feminine. The suformatives are the endings. The katal, or the perfect form, is also called the suffix form because it's formed using suffixes. There's no prefixes. Notice that here's our root here. None of these has anything added to the beginning. When we look at yiktol verbs, we'll see prefixes added. For the suffix form, or the katal perfect, there are no prefixes, only suffixes, what is called suformatives here, which also means a suffix. So third masculine singular has no ending. Third feminine singular has a comate. And you can go down through and see all the rest of the endings here in this chart. So when we parse a verb, we're looking for these endings. These are going to be critical in determining what we're looking at. So let's go back over to our sentences here. We're going to pick up with number three. And as we saw before, we have asita. So asita, notice that we have this ending, this ta ending, this ta with a comets underneath it. So that's a ta, but we have a yod in the middle of this. Well, where have we seen that? Well, if we go back to our chart, we have three different types of verbs. Actually, the this column and this column are both strong verbs. So this is strong verbs. This verb here is a strong verb as well, meaning it has no gutturals or other funny letters. At the beginning, notice that there's a doggish laney in this calf. But other than that, it behaves the same as these strong verbs over here. So we won't spend a lot of time messing with the begad kafat column. It's not super significant. The main thing is we're going to look at strong verbs. We're going to look at three hay verbs. Now we saw the ta, and there it is. There's the ta ending. We also saw the yod, and there's that yod. So this tells us that we're looking at second masculine singular, and it's a three hay verb. What this means is that the third letter of the root is hay. Notice that the root for this, it's not listed here, but the root here is bana. The third masculine singular form shows us the letters of the root here. So it's bait, noon, hay. But in some of the forms, we see that the hay drops off and it's replaced by a yod. And so the second masculine singular is one of those examples, banita. So we'll come back over to our exercise here. This is a second masculine singular form. And the root is going to be asa. That's ayin seen, and hey. So second masculine singular, you, 
did or made. Asa is the root for to make or to do. So we'll begin this. You, masculine. And it'd be past tense, made. That's the default translation of the perfect. And then we have et. Now notice et here. This is the direct object marker. And that is covered in chapter 8 on page 47. Okay, so page 47, top of page 48. The et is the direct object marker. And it essentially tells us that what comes after it is the direct object of the verb. So we have ha mizbeach. So we have the definite article, ha. Mizbeach is alter. So we know that the direct object of the verb made is an al I'm sorry, the alter. And then finally we have begezer. And that would be in Gezer. Okay, you made the altar in Gezer. We had a katal form here, also known as a perfect. The stem was a cal. Everything that we've done so far is a cal. That is the most common of all the stems in Hebrew. The form is katal, so it's a cal katal or perfect. And then it was 2ms. And as we said, the root was asa. So that's how we parse that verb. Let's come down and look at number five here. We have katavnu et hamitzvot la'am. Note again, we have an accent on the second to last syllable. So it's katavnu et hamitzvot la'am. So we have a nice standard katal verb here with that new ending. That's one diagnostic of a katal of the first common plural. Let's go over and look at our chart. So we're looking for, actually, it's using the same root as our table here. So katav, and here is Katavnu. That's way down there at the bottom. And that's our first common plural, our we. Essentially, this is the same as a strong verb. So katalnu, katavnu, the ending is the same. So it's the new ending. But we happen to see our form right here, right in front of us. So we might as well take advantage of it. All right, so we come back over. So we have, go ahead and parse it first. We have a cal stem. Everything we will be looking at will be a cal stem. Then it is a katal. That's the table we were looking at, or perfect. First common plural. And the root is katav. So I'll go ahead and write that in. That's calf, tau, and bait, katav. For a root, I don't have to put in a dagesh laney. I can, but typically for a root, we just skip all the pointing altogether. We just put the letters in. So there's katav. That's our root. Let's go ahead and start typing in what it means here. So katavnu would mean we wrote... Then we have the direct object marker at. So what follows it is the direct object, ha mitzvot. This is an interesting word, and it might be a little bit confusing. A mitzvah is a commandment. It's a feminine noun. So mitzvot, that is our plural ending. So we wrote, and it's got a definite article on it, the hay with the patak and the doubling of the first letter, the maim. See the Dagger's Forte in the first letter there. So we wrote the commandments. And then finally, La'am. Am is people. La would be our preposition. And then 
the fact that we have the comets here tells us that we had a definite article and it got replaced by the Lamed. So this was Ha'am, the Lamed turned it into La'am. The Lamed dropped in instead of the hay. So we have definite article. We wrote the commandments to the people. To the people. Let me do a quick sidebar on Mitzvot to show how that got formed. So here we have our word in its singular form. We have mitzvah. Notice what we have here is a consonantal vav with a comets. So that is mitzvah. Some would pronounce that mitzvah. Some people pronounce it with a V sound, some with a W. So mitzvah or mitzvah. I say mitzvah. Note we have Vav is a consonant followed by the vowel, comets. And then the hay is, really it's comets hay, is the final vowel. The plural we see down here is mitzvot. Again, we have a consonant, that's that vav or that wow. And then we have the vowel. In this case, it is a holum. So it's consonant vav with a holum vowel. This is not the same as a holum vav. That's a vowel letter. That's something different. That's a vowel in and of itself. This is consonant and vowel. So how do we get there? We have our base word. In order to turn it into a plural, normally we remove the comets hay and we add oat. So holum vav and tav. And so we would have mitzvot. Notice that this looks different. So what ha what's happened here is that we drop out the vowel letter we drop out the vowel letter and we convert it to a simple holum. So here we have the holum. So this vowel letter has been converted to a holum. So we have meets vote. Again, it's consonant vowel. Here we have consonant vowel. This is a vowel letter. So even though this looks the same as this. They're not the same. Up here, we have a vowel letter. And it's coming after the consonant vav. So we have vote. Down here, we have the consonant vav, and its vowel is a simple holum. And that's mitzvot. That can be a little bit confusing. And in this case, the plural is written what we call defectively. I suppose the Hebrews just didn't like the look of this. It looks kind of messy. So they compacted it a little bit, and they made it mitzvot. Note that it sounds exactly the same. You've got mitzvot, mitzvot. All right, so coming back over here, we have Hamit's vote, so what we see in this particular sentence. Katavnu, we wrote at Hamit's vote the commandments La'am to the people. All right, let's look at the next one here. We have Ra'u Hakohanim Dam al Hamizbeach. Ra'u Hakohanim Dam al Hamizbeach. So we have Ra'u. This is a little bit tricky because the hay is actually dropped off of this. We look at our chart over here on page 56. 
And this is again going to be a three hay verb. And here we go. It's looks like it follows this pattern here. We have the final hay dropped off and it's got this shurik at the end. So it's third common plural. And then we need to figure out the root. And so the root here is going to be so the root is going to be Raish Aleph He Ra to see. Back in the time of First Samuel, a Roa, those same consonants, was a seer. So here's Ra to see. And then we have a third common plural. So we're going to write all that down. Cal is our stem, will always be our stem. And it's a katal. And it is third common plural. And as I said, the root is ra'a. Now we have hakohanim. So this is the priests. So kohen is priest and kohanim. This is one of those cases where the first vowel doesn't reduce, so the second one does. So Kohen becomes Kohanim. The im ending tells us it's plural. And that is priests. So we will have masculine plural. The priests, and it matches the plural verb. Remember, that's a plural verb also, and it's common, so it will be either masculine or feminine will match it. So the priests saw Ra'u, and then what did they see? Dom is blood, al, upon, or on, can also mean concerning, but in this case I'm thinking they saw blood on something, al hamis beach. So they saw blood on or upon the altar. So here's a case where we have a plural subject matching a plural verb. And because it's common, masculine or feminine will both match it. So the priests saw blood on the altar. Let's do another one here. We'll do number seven. Let me read it. Hagiborim halaku el hamidbar. Lama'an asher yirash et hanegev. Okay. Hagiborim halaku el hamidbar. Lama'an asher yirash hasar et hanegev. Interesting. Okay. So this is a little bit longer. It actually has two verbs. The first verb is going to be here, halaku. And we have a noun coming before that. So we have hagiborim. So a gabor is a warrior, a mighty man. So let's go ahead and start typing that in. And then we'll look at the verb second. So there is a definite article in front of ha giborim. You see the definite article, the hay with the patak, and then the doubled first letter, that gimel is doubled. Ha giborim. The second letter is also doubled. That's part of the word itself. The word itself has a double letter in it. That's just some words have dagash fortes in them. That's just the way it goes. So we have the warriors. And so then we have here halaku. We need to go look that up. So we'll look that up in our table. We can consider this, for our purposes, to be a strong verb for the time being. And for katals, it acts like a strong verb anyway. So we're going to come down here. And here's another third common plural. Only in this case, nothing drops off of it. We have all the letters in the root show up, which happens in a strong verb. 
Our paradigm verb is katal, and that would be katalu. And over here, that shows up as halaku. So that is a cal, katal, third common plural. I'll put the parsing over here this time. So the warriors, and notice that we have warriors as plural, and this is plural, so they match. Common will match either masculine or feminine, and it's plural, so warriors, which is masculine, matches. The warriors went, so halak means to go, and we'll do it past tense. Katal base translation would be went. And then we have El Hamidbar. So L is the preposition for to. Type that in. And then Hamidbar. This is definite article. And then Midbar is wilderness. So the warriors went to the wilderness. Now we have Lama'an Asher. And that word pair there will mean in order that, or in order to, or perhaps for the sake of. So in order that now we have Yirash. That is a Yiktol verb, not a Katal. So we'll just have to look that up on page 43. That turns out to mean he will possess, possibly inherit. And that means that we have a third masculine singular here. That's what that he is telling us. So then we're looking for the next word is hasar, which would be the prince or the leader. And so I think we're going to then replace our he with the leader will possess et, that's our direct object marker, hanegev. The Negev can refer to an area in the south of Israel called the Negev. Sometimes it refers to the south just itself. So it could be we'll possess the south land, but we'll just leave it as the Negev. So here we have the warriors went to the wilderness in order that the leader, and I think maybe this is one of those cases where we could turn this into more of a modal sense so that the leader may possess or might possess the Negev. That phrase in order that sometimes tells us that our verb might have this this may sense that the leader might or may possess the Negev. Let's do one more here. Number nine we have Habanitem et habatim la nashim. Habanitem et habatim la nashim. This is tricky because at the beginning here we have a hay with a patak, and that looks a lot like a definite article. Notice that the second letter here does not have a dagish forte. And it's a bait, so it can take a dagish forte. In addition, we see that there is a shawa, a vocal shawa, underneath the bait. And so what we have here is an interrogative hey. So what's happening here is normally the interrogative hey has a hot of patak, one of these vocal shawas. But when that bumps up against the next letter, in this case, a bait with a vocal shawa. Two vocal shawas can't go together. And so what happens is that this first letter converts to a full vowel and becomes ha. So that's what happened here, but there is no dagish forte. And that's how we know that this is not a definite article. So we have a question. So now we need to look at the verb itself, which we look at in the absence of the question. 
So we forget about the interrogative hey and just look at the rest of this. Benitem. Benitem. That tem is making me think that we're looking at a catal verb here. Let's go look at our chart. And actually, we're looking at bana, interestingly. So it's actually showing up right in our chart the way we see it in our sentence. Here we have bunny tem. Bunny tem. So that is our second masculine plural. Cal catal. Now let's go back over. We will write that out for ourselves. So we have cal catal, second masculine plural. Our root, as we saw, was bana. I'll go ahead and write that in. We were at the edge here. That's bana. To build. And then we have, since it's second masculine plural, that will be you, masculine plural. And so we'll start it out as a question. It's past tense. Did you build? Without the interrogative, it would be you, masculine plural, built. But we'll go ahead and start, start it with, as a question. Did you build? And again, that's masculine plural. Did you build? At, there is direct object marker coming right after the verb. That's how we know it's a direct object marker. The word at can also be a preposition that means with. But when it comes right after a verb like this, it's, it is often a direct object marker. And then habatim. And batim is the plural for house, by it. And we have a definite article here. So this is a normal one because notice we have the hepatoc plus the dagish forte in the bait. So we have, did you build the houses? And then finally we have la nashim. So nashim is women and we have the lamed pronoun and notice we also have the patach and the dagger's forte in the first letter, which indicates that we did have we did have an article. We had Hanashim. And we wanted to put a Lamed in there. So the Lamed comes along. And we drop out the shawa, we drop out the hay, and then the lamad, and the lamad goes into the place where the hay was before. So we have the women. Did you build houses? And then the lamad would be two or four. I think this case it'll be four. Did you build houses for the women? Question mark. So there's some examples of Katal verbs in sentences.